Not only am I gonna teach you exactly how to play this Minecraft song, I'm gonna show you the sound effects to make it sound close to the real thing. So I started playing this on my real piano and it sounded really good, but something was missing. It's not only the melody that's beautiful, it's the sound effects on the instrumentation that really immerse you in the Minecraft world. All in all, I made nine adjustments to the sound for this song. I'm gonna show you each of them one by one. I'm gonna show you what they do, if I know, sometimes I don't. And then to play the actual song, we're gonna break it down into three simple parts. The beginning, the middle, and the end. And each of those parts is broken out into their own super easy sub parts where we learn the left and the right hand separately. So I listened to the song over and over again to learn how to play it. And then I started experimenting with sound effects. Now I'm no sound engineer. I cycled through all the piano sounds on my keyboard only to realize that it was gonna be the first one that was gonna work the best. And that's it, that's number one out of nine is finding a good instrument. Second, I just added five cents of detuning. That just lowers the pitch of the note very, very slightly. It's almost not noticeable. Third, I added a delay. The delay that sounded good was 132T. I'm not too sure what that means, but it has 0% feedback. And what delay does, it just repeats the note you just hit, just milliseconds after you actually hit it. I cranked my cutoff knob all the way down just to kind of darken the sound a little bit, but I just kind of liked how it sounded. I changed the attack to plus one, just so the notes would come in a little softer. What that means is when you press the note, it's not immediately registering the hit. It waits just another millisecond or so to grab that sound. Then I cranked my release up all the way to plus 53 to get those long sustained sounds that these Minecraft songs have. And then, you know, I cranked that reverb all the way up just to get it more roomy and amplify those sustained sounds a little bit. And then I cranked up the chorus one too. I thought it sounded good. Not too sure what that does. And lastly, I adjusted my EQ, which is equalization to boost the low tones. So first I reduced to the high frequencies and then I set my mid tones at a very low frequency and boosted that. And then I also boosted the low tones. What that means is there's lower frequencies in the sound spectrum that are kind of like rumbling, very low, subwooferish, if you will. I brought those up and made them louder. And then like high pitch ringies at the high frequencies, I brought all those down. Yeah! All right, everybody, welcome to the party. Let's learn how to play this song. Yeah, that's right. Get into it, yeah. So again, we've cut the song into three parts, beginning, middle, and end. We're starting in beginning. And within beginning, there are eight super easy sub parts that I've broken this down into. And we're gonna learn the left and the right separately, then put them together. Here's part one, left hand. That's it, you're done. You just hit it four times. And then here's the right hand for part one. You're playing that four times too. Now let's put them together. You play the left part, then the right part four times. Excellent. Do a little celebration dance for yourself and then let's move on. Part two of the beginning, left hand. You got it. Guess what? The right hand's the same as part one. Let's get right into it. You already know it. That's parts one and two, down. Guess what, you already know part three on the left. It's the same as part two on the left. Part three, right hand. Now that's the fastest melody we've had so far, so take your time, learn that. Now we put them together, part three. Part four, left hand. Part four, right hand. Part four, together. Nice job, you are just flying through this. Let's keep going. Part five, left hand. Now you have to do a pretty big reach here, so practice. It's going F all the way up to the second C after it. Part five, right hand. Part five, all together. Now, I don't remember which part we're on, but here's the right hand. All together now. We're on the last.
last part of the beginning, guess what? It's the same as parts two and three. On the left hand anyways. And here's the right hand, you're gonna play this two times. You play that two times. That is the whole beginning. Good job, you did it. That's the biggest part. Take a quick stretch, you know, just, you know, limber up for this middle part. It's actually really easy. This middle part's the easiest by far. So now in the grand scheme of things, we are in part two, the middle. There's three parts in the middle. Break them down to left and right. You know the drill, let's get into it. Let's go, come on, you got it, come on. Part one, left hand, just a C power chord, baby. Woo. And then an A power chord. Part one on the right hand, a descending C power chord. And then an A minor. Part one of the middle, left and right together. Part two, left hand, F power chord, baby. G power chord. Yeah. Right hand, part two. You go in C, G, then A. Then G, D, B. I kind of staggered the C, G, and the G, D parts. You notice how it kind of went like, -ding! Just a little fun touch of flavor. I thought I heard something like that when I was listening to the song, so go ahead and try it out. Part two all together. Absolutely gorgeous. Last part of the middle. It's just the same as part one, guys. Honestly, I don't know why I made it a separate part. Here we go. Never seen that one before. A little celebration, happy dance. There you go. All right, we're about to go into the last six parts of the end. So, you know, stretch it out again. All right, I'm back. I just took a, you know, just a nighttime walk around my house and reflected on life for a little bit. I'm feeling like a new man. My wife's gone right now, so it's just me and the cats. You might be able to see one of them right in there. Me eh? Mino, what are you doing? <laughs> Let's wrap it up with the end. There are six parts in the end. Here is the left hand of part one. And I just put the right hand right after it, because why not? So this is part one on the right hand. It's just G, D. Repeat that left-handed part. Piece of cake. Let's go back just for a sec. I just want to talk about this chord. This is my favorite chord in the whole wide world. So we're actually pressing C, then the G and the B, then the E and the G, right? If you play them all together, it's a C major seventh. If you know me, you know I freaking love major sevenths. Anytime something in a song hooks me, I'll go listen to it and then play it on the piano. And it's because it's a major seventh or some kind of variation of that. Part two of the end, here's the left hand. It is a F major seventh chord. Woo! And I know, I know this E's brown. I forgot to change the color. It's the left hand, even though it's brown. Play it twice. It's just beautiful, by the way. This is just gorgeous. I could listen to this all day. Here's your right hand for part two. Part two all together. Part three, left hand, it's pretty similar to part one. You're playing the same kind of staggered C major seventh here, playing it twice. That's the only difference. You're playing D and E after the second time playing the C major seventh. Part three, right hand. Part three all together. Part four. 
part four, you're just repeating part two. You already know it. And guess what? You already know part five, too. It's part one. Part six is just the left hand. Actually, there's no right hand. It's just the left hand. Just playing that C major seventh twice. Or just as many times as you want. Beautiful. Slowly faded out. You did it. Congratulations. Now I know you're itching to hear the whole thing. I dedicated a whole separate special video for that. So click right here for that. You the best.